Hello and welcome to a new episode of Cult Classic Movie Corner. Today, this show is going to be about John Carpenter's The Thing, and I have invited a guest to join me, and he is going to appear magically now. Hello, all you beautiful Hello. people. Yes. Hello, Terry. Thanks for joining me, Dieter. This is Dieter Bastian, who uh, many will know from um, Let's Get Physical Media over at the Burr Network. That is correct. And you invited me here. And we yes. talk about a cult classic movie, which you gave me some options that I should choose a cult classic movie. But I told you, for me, that's tough because classic doesn't always jive with cult for me. If you have something yeah. like The Exorcist, it's a classic, really a classic mm -hmm. movie, but not a cult movie for me. And the thing mm. was the only thing I could thought up, which was a, more a cult movie in the beginning, but became a classic later on. Later on. Yeah, um, it, the the term cult classic movie is is uh, it's up for discussion. It's it's whatever you feel like. Yeah. Um, in general, they say that like a cult classic movie has to be a movie that maybe it didn't do so well in the box office, but then it's become a huge thing later. Uh, other times, it might be a movie that is complete trash. Like it's 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 awful, but people love uh, watching it. Uh, like like um, um, Tommy Wiseau's uh, The Room. Uh, which obviously is a cult movie. If it's a classic, I don't know, but but it, those terms are kind of interchangeable for uh, yeah. for me. But for me, this um, was the perfect title, considering both both terms. Oh yeah, I, I agree, and and I love the fact that you chose uh, the thing. It's been one of my favorite movies for as long as I can remember. Yeah. I have bought this movie so many times during the years Me I've too. collected Me physical <laughs> media. Uh, I, I've had it on the, the shitty brown Universal DVD that came okay. out back in the day. Okay. And I noticed in the background there you have uh, the laser disc and the That's awesome, the um, yes, the, the one collection. with the, I really like that slipcover. I think it's, yeah, it's a really cool, cool, really cool uh, I release. I was this was the first who came with the, with the documentary uh, uh, outside of the laser disc, but I could be could be wrong about it. That might be true. Uh, I was very glad to see that the uh, documentary was included on the uh, on the four K. Yeah, it's because really I, an awesome, awesome documentary. Yeah, I recently purchased and got the uh, savvy exclusive steelbook. Awesome of uh, the thing. Um, there was no question that I had to have it in 4K, no. uh, even but though it's not that long hope. ago since I spent money on, on the Arrow <laughs> no, release. No, the Arrow, correct. Yes. But let's hope it's really the last time we bought the thing. Let's hope it's really the last time. When? Oh, yeah, I, I'm not when going you, 8K. When you, when you first saw the thing? Before the first I can't. I, I tried thinking about that earlier okay. today, um, but I can't remember exactly when was the first time I saw it. Yeah. I believe it was on cable television uh, at some point uh, growing up. Um, but I, I just immediately kind of fell in love with the whole the whole way the movie is, is set up. Yeah. And being Norwegian, of course, it's of course. it's extra special <laughs> uh, because there aren't that many uh, Hollywood movies that really like take place uh, in yep. Norway and feature Norwegians. Yes. And uh, it's really funny for a Norwegian guy to see this movie and and see the actor who is playing um, the rifleman who comes yep. into the uh, uh, the camp. Let me just check. Uh, this was Larry Frango, Norwegian passenger with rifle. Yeah, who yeah. played? <laughs> who obviously isn't Norwegian. Uh, <laughs> yes, but but he, he delivers uh, the lines. You can understand what he says. And um, that's actually one of the first things I shared when I got to know our, our friend in common, Robert, was I told him what the Norwegian guy said. Uh, and what he is shouting is basically like, uh, get away from it you, it, you you idiots. It's not a dog. It's some kind of thing. It's only imitating a dog. Get away, idiots. Nice that I finally know 
what the Norwegian yeah. was talking about. <laughs> yeah, because it's never been subtitled or explained no. in any way. But but even though he says it in a, a very strange manner, yeah. uh, you you can totally understand what he's saying, and and he's warning them that uh, that the, this is not a dog. I know what you're talking about, considering having American actors speaking other languages. I know American actors if they try to speak like me my bad english they try to speak german and sometimes mm -hmm. i thought what what was he saying was was this really german you know yeah <laughs> when they when his problem is they're just saying it phonetically you know you get it phonetically yeah. say this but they don't really know what what they are saying or how, to, how does it really would sound you know yeah so sometimes it's, but, it's really really wonky <laughs> But there's uh, way worse examples of Norwegian in, in okay. cinema, like the, uh, you know, the episode of X-Files uh, that has some Norwegians in it. Unfortunately, uh, not. Uh, no. Yeah, but you you can't understand what the hell they're trying to say. <laughs> and and the, the characters are named after Norwegian cities. So one guy is called Trondheim, because that's a city in Norway. Another guy is called Bergen. <laughs> um, so it's it's kind of like, like naming someone like, uh, yeah, like, Hello, Mr. Berlin. Uh, yeah, yeah, you wanna wanna come down in the basement? <laughs> it's 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 odd, um, but it's always fun, and I I like the whole thing in this movie with um, with uh, Kurt Russell uh, referring to them as the Swedes. Swedes. Yeah, yeah, and that's really insulting for Norwegians because Norway and Sweden have this, <laughs> of course, like any bordering country, we have yeah. this love love hate relationship. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, always competing with each other. I remember, I re really remember seeing the, the thing for the first time. It was on a VHS tape, you know, a copy of a copy of a copy. I had a friend back in the day and his father did get to these movies uh, uh, at some point. I, my family didn't have a VHS uh, uh, tape recorder, but he's got one. And this was the first time I saw uh, the picture, but I can't tell you anymore bad probably the picture quality uh, oh, yeah. was but um, of course it um, it stuck with me around through uh, all these years and all the physical media transformation it got uh, over the years and for me if you uh, would ask me your favorite John Carpenter movie probably I don't have to think about it twice it would mm. be the thing considering his reputation and uh, uh, how many people got in the business considering makeup and that stuff and the movie that's that uh, the movie still holds up you know we all have to have this movies we watched when we are young you watch now and think mm, why did you like the movie back in the day you know the nostalgia factor but this movie really 40 years next year really holds still holds up in my book oh yeah and, and like I have you to, i love the, the the complete setting the setting i yeah. always love the setting if, if people are isolated in some form uh, not only in this movie and other movies too, if they're isolated in some form. That's always a, a great, great startup for me for for any kind of kind of movie. And what's what great is that the thing actually sets itself in 1982. You know, that's yeah. always a great start. So if you got older computer screens or something like that, that doesn't take you out of the movie because it sets itself at this yes. year. At um I watched House of Wax two weeks ago, just to give you an example. It started with a flashback to 1978, I believe. Doesn't matter. And then you have to switch to a line present day, you know. And the movie mm. came out in 2005, you know. Yeah. And al it, already you have it. old phones, you know, old phones. Yep. Somebody is filming with a video camera. Probably nobody would, would do that at the present day because we all have our smartphones to film something, you know. And it immediately doesn't track anymore if you say present day probably in 10 years it will you have the feeling it, it it's an old movie you know but the thing sets itself Indeed. at 1982 and so it always works even today so here at hollywood uh listen to uh Tadia and dieter's tips uh don't date movies to present day and yep. don't say just, in the just... year in and don't say in the year 20xx <laughs> that's always uh, considering Blade Runner we always passed past that that date when the movie was setting you know it's a yep. uh, strange strange feeling S still no spinners still no robots S still, yeah uh, yeah they lie to us 
they lied to us over and over again. Uh, and <laughs> another thing, well, I, I recently, well, yesterday I watched the, yeah. the 4K release and I was blown away by the image quality. Very, very nice. Uh, and I have to say, even, even all the upgrades this movie has got, the effects still really, really just work. I am so glad that they didn't go for like CGI or or something like that uh, in this movie. That they have these these real yeah. physical effects that are just insanely well made. Insane. This movie has and some of the best monster yeah. designs I've I've seen in any movie ever. Any movie, correct? You were totally on board, and and the movie for me has also a great pacing. You know, uh, I always I have some younger friends, and there are. I would say older movies, I wouldn't show them to them. You know, always the old movies have mostly a slow burn feeling to them. But the thing has a mm. nice pacing to it. It's always something something happening in the movie that, that pushes the, the plot forward. And the thing, considering the effects, still holds up. It's still a movie that I would recommend even younger younger uh, uh, people to, to yeah, watch. To totally. And I also like the fact that it's 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 not really built as like a science fiction horror movie. It's yep. it's actually more built like an Agatha Christie uh, yep. crime drama. Uh, it, it's basically a, a, a who done it, um, yeah. just with a, a different setting. Uh, and I, I understood that that was what uh, Carpenter wanted for this movie because he grew up being a, a big fan of the uh, uh, 50s uh, movie. I believe it's from the 50s. Yeah. Um, the Thing from Another World. World uh, which, I, which I did see back in the day when I was really, really little. And okay. even, even if that was a black and white movie that, and it was just a, a man in a costume that scared the hell out of me. You know? Yeah, and, and it scared wanna... the hell out of, of John Carpenter, apparently. He said he was... Yeah. He was like 10 or 12 or something when he saw it. And uh, he got so scared in one scene that, that his popcorn just flew up in the air. Um, but but it's more like a Frankenstein movie from what yeah, I understand. Cool. Absolutely. Uh, they've and totally this dro dropped how, this. How really a remake sh should be done, you know? this uh, You can't actually compare the two at all. Okay, the story is the same, but they are really not comparable in any in any other way than... Just from the story perspective, yes, but what what's happening? Not not at all. Not at all. Yeah. And on that note, what do you think about the uh, the prequel uh, to this movie from two thousand eleven? Uh, the, the prequel. There are always movies when I watch them. I think, well, they are, uh, are not that bad. But then two days later, I already forgot what what was happening in the movie, and I but I totally. Like the ending of the movie, you know, since yeah. it's a prequel, it really closes nicely a gap to the old one. And it would really have been great if they would have gone practical all the way. And I and I yeah. always read the rumor that there was the idea to yeah, do a practical. They were supposed to, but then they yeah. went away from it and went digital. Um but I but I, I help, to say help I, out, there, uh, but help me out in, in the prequel, are there Norwegian actors in it? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Almost all the well, I think all the Norwegians are actually played by fairly well-known Norwegian actors. Uh, one of them I've I've met three times. I met him at a uh, Yes concert, uh, oh. and I met him at a horror festival uh, a couple of years ago. And I actually uh, stood there talking to him for like an hour about the thing, and he told me mm -hmm. stories from the set. Uh, right. It's a Norwegian Norwegian actor called Stig Henrik Hoff. Um, I don't remember his character name, but yeah. uh, but doesn't really matter. But um, well, he he enjoyed the movie, but uh, it it gets a lot of of flack yeah. for not at being least, good. I I don't agree. I it, it I really like it. So it, it it at least it wasn't a remake, you know. No or reboot. It's, it's selling a prequel from the Norwegian perspective. What happens to that station? So so it was a a good good start point. For me, but it's a movie that that I'm, I am always forgetting what was happening, and then when I watch it, hey, it's not it's not that bad, you know. I remember oh, I, Mary I, Elizabeth Winstead in it, yeah. Uh, uh, but often I for, forget what was actually in it in the movie. Terminator Salvation is is a is a is a similar movie to me. When I watch it, hey, Terminator Salvation is not that bad, 
Og two days later, what was happening in Terminator Salvation? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think it's entertaining, and I, yeah. I like the concept of them exploring what happened, even though it's it's like that in 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 movie them that uh, it's not always a good idea to explain something away. It's sometimes better to just have the mystery. Yeah. But I, I I like the direction they went, and I appreciate how they tie the movies together. So uh, and and also. This whole Norwegian aspect for me is cool seeing that they actually for once totally. cast Norwegian yeah. actors who speak proper Norwegian. They sing a Norwegian song in the uh, in the cantina. And oh yeah, it, I remember it, that. Yeah. yeah, and it, it just just makes the whole thing more believable. Yeah. And it's um, great that they, they put uh, the 2011 version in the in the in the in the bigger yeah, one. Oh yeah. You find in the bigger you find one. the yeah. 2011 one, you find yeah. uh, that movie too in there too. I have a, a single release of it. Yeah, I have a single um, release too. Probably a steelbook. I think it's a steelbook. Oh, also. cool! But I don't know. So the, but, but <laughs> the 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 original from 1982. Yeah, the original. There's there's yeah. there's there's so many things that make this movie good. One is of course the way John Carpenter shoots. He he loves playing with uh, the widescreen, uh, and the cast is just great. Uh, Walter was Walter Brimley. Uh, he's called correct. Wilford Brimley. I Wilford Brimley. Wilford. Yeah, yeah, I really like him in it. Keith David, of course, is great. Yeah. Uh, Richard uh, Mazur uh, is cool because I, I know him from from other like eighties TV shows and stuff. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, and of course uh, Kurt Russell. Yeah, and for me, me uh, David David Clennon, who played a uh, uh, Palmer. We had that great line. You gotta be fucking kidding me. You couldn't be yeah. more in the same seat as him when you saw yeah. the, the effects. And you <laughs> you thought the same thing as him because you have never seen such effects to to that degree. You know, that those no. kind of transformations, you know, it's always you know, men in costume, but this was a totally different. <laughs> Different right. Oh, and, I I, rem I remember being a kid uh, and just my my jaw just dropping yeah. when you get this monster, which is the the head that falls off, and then uh, the crab's feet grow out of it and the tentacles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is one of the most hideous, amazingly f darkly funny monsters yeah. I've seen in any movie. The most thing that shocked me was actually when they are doing the CPR. On the guy, oh yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and the the chest bursts open. Yeah, his his arms go in his chest. That was was really for me came up for the first when I saw it for the first time, of course, out of nowhere, you know. Yeah, and, was, and and it's it's seamless. It just seems yeah. so real. I I saw um, on the documentary that uh, they they cut into two arms they've made, and they've like gone into detail creating layers with like. Uh, bone structure and and flesh and blood and it, it just it, it in the movie it's just so seamless and it comes or the, or, or almost the as a jump they, scare. They, yeah or the, or the corpse that they find at the norwegian station you know the, to totally meld it into one and they put out the, the organs are still human organs and yeah don't forget one of the best actors is the dog actually the dog is just just great you know <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, also, in the Norwegian camp, I like the, the the guy who's sitting there in his chair and he slit his oh, own yeah. wrists, and yeah. you just uh, the blood has has that frozen. Has frozen, yeah, yeah. It's such a great detail, and I thought that was cool that you that they've kind of used the same sets in the the prequel movie from two thousand eleven. That I, I think the movie ha shows a lot of respect for the for yeah. the original. Yeah, um, and the, the score in this movie just plays it as its own role. And I, I think it's cool that Ennio Morricone uh, seems to have kind of made this music in, in his interpretation of a John Carpenter. Exactly. Theme. Exactly. Yeah. Because it isn't typi typical for no. Morricone at all. Uh, but it is the, like the, 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 the bass that like yeah. uh, kind of, it's like, a, it's kind of like so, a heartbeat. Yeah. For me, it, if you would go in blind and you wouldn't have any opening credits who told you mm -hmm. who the music was from, you would yeah. just expecting Archon did it himself again. 
Oh, just... Absolutely, and he and he 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 is a great musician. I was lucky enough to to see him twice when he did his uh, tour awesome. playing his uh, his uh, soundtrack uh, films. I first first went there to with a with a friend of mine to Copenhagen to see it there because then he hadn't announced any dates in Norway but then just like a month later he just decided to pop in so I got to see it a second time in in Oslo. Uh, and it was an amazing experience. I, I sat on the first row and it was just strange being like uh, five meters or 10 meters or something from uh, John Carpenter standing there playing <laughs> all these amazing songs from my teen teenage uh, upbringing, uh, a, a truly and, uh, epic event. Uh, they probably sounded a little bit different when you heard them, them live with a, another volume. <laughs> Yeah, another volume, and, and some of them have been slightly updated. Uh, but it's it's it it was amazing just hearing them played uh, live, and he also did uh, the score from uh, the thing. Um, yeah, total totally amazing. And considering the the movie itself, we know the, the effects are great, but the movie itself, considering the paranoia aspect, and considering the virus, we're still living now in a pandemic. You know when I just have to look and fuke says it's probably best everybody does his meal on on their self you know just eating cans that mm. we don't mix together it's still yeah. it's still uh, up to date the movie yeah and and because they didn't they didn't know how this thing was uh, going to to spread no uh and i i I so enjoy the scene where they have everybody tied up and they're doing this uh, this heat test on the blood. Uh, I think that scene Famous is scene. yeah, it's it's so so full of tension that yeah. almost every time I watch the movie, I actually forget who's infected and who isn't <laughs> uh, uh, for and, for some reason. Uh, and it has one of the best jumps, or or this is a perfect example for a good jump scare which doesn't rely on just drowning out the volume and putting the volume up to full dynamic mm. you know from one from zero to 100 in one uh, second so this is just a great jump scare that, that, that it's, yeah it's amazing it works and 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 like you said this is a movie you would totally recommend to to anyone today as yeah. if it was a movie that came out now um, and I have a clip I'm going to play uh, okay. to kind of um, show uh, how this movie, uh, still being from 1982, it continues to inspire people. It continues to be a, a big phenomenon. And I found uh, a guy on YouTube who's made a claymation uh, combination of the kids' show Pingu, which I'm sure you know, okay. uh, because it's I think it's European. Uh, and he's combined that with the thing. So let's uh, let's watch that. <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah, that totally deserves an applause. And um, I mad kudos to Lee Hardcastle. Uh, please go and find his YouTube channel. I, I uh, put the link uh, in the video, uh, but just search search for Lee Hardcastle on YouTube. He makes amazing uh, claymation stop motion things. Um, he has done the music video for. 
um, uh, a song called, uh, oh, my, I'm totally drawing a blank. Um, From which artist? To, oh, I'm, I'm going to. Guess a famous, famous artist? Yeah, they, they make, um, uh, let's see. I know this. I have what you call um, an, an iron curtain over my head. That can happen. Consider, consider Gunship. Uh, yeah, oh, the, band, the band is called Gunship. And yep. they have an amazing song uh, that you need to find where he has done the, uh, the animation for it. And it's called Tech Noir. Uh, cool. Gunship's uh, song Tech Noir. I'll I'll send you the uh, the link, Dieter, and you can watch it. It's it even has John Carpenter doing narration in the beginning, and it's about this guy who watches VHS tapes, and the, his character uses he has a slot on his chest, yeah. and he can insert VHS, mm -hmm. VHS tapes, and he turns into the character. So there's references to like RoboCop and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's amazing, and all with claymation animation by. Uh, by this guy. Great. Uh, considering the stop motion, which was great, but uh, it was great. If you watch the deleted scenes, there was actually more stop motion uh, yeah. planned in the deleted scenes. But it was great that they cut it down to just, I think, the piece where he gets the TNT, you know? Yeah, the, there's, there yeah, there's this stop, arm coming up. Yeah. If there were, was more stop motion uh, animation in the thing, that would probably. Would have taken me out, especially at the at the climax of the movie. And another thing, when the thing came out here in Germany, it was a certification eighteen and over. So it was for people of the age of eighteen. Yeah, and it went on the so-called in Germany index, which means the movie is not forbidden, but you can't probably don't mark it the movie okay. or at the movie. So if you put out a magazine considering what is new, you can't mention the thing. So it's prob so it's more the thing is or is a movie that it's non existent. So back in the day okay. it was certified with 18, but now mm -hmm. times change it's certified 16. You know ah, it's gone okay. through a new new checkup, you know, and now it's uh, for the ages 16 and up. But back in the day when it came out, it was uh, 18 and up. Hmm. So uh, I believe there are a lot, lot of examples in, in, in Germany well. that, that, that got another another newer, lower certification than back in the day. Did it have a, another title in, in Germany? Uh, no, it was actually, it was called The Thing from Another World. It was, yeah, same, it was same in Norway. Like, like it's... Older. it's in in uh, Norwegian is called Tingen fra en arm verden, which translates just to the thing from another world. Or it was just called das Ding, you know. It was just mm -hmm. trans translated, you know. Mm -hmm. But it was uh, a movie that stood the test of time, and for me it would be interesting if you would say, "Tell you you have a movie. Do you want the movie your movie to be successful at the point it comes out?" But nobody talks about it in three or five mm. years. Or would you rather have a movie that actually fails at the box office, didn't as well received, but becomes a cult classic over time? What would you rather prefer? You know, I, th I, th I think as a movie maker, I think I I I like the second. Uh, yeah. It's it's much more interesting having people in in twenty twenty one sitting sitting yeah. here like we are now discussing this movie that has made such an impact on both of us, uh, rather than talking about a movie that was uh, well, it was cool, and then you you just don't divulge time yeah. to to go into the depths of it because. It doesn't stand the test of time. No, uh, I don't think I'm going to be sitting anywhere talking about the Fast and the Furious franchise in 20 years. Even though I think they're fun movies, I don't think I'm going to be. <laughs> someone's going to be sitting. <laughs> oh, you remember just, those? Just the insides of the of the double sided laser. This was a double sided sided disc. This was the was the back. Always great. You have to a, uh, a big, have a big to laser love laser even, even even if I don't play it anymore. I'd, haven't even hooked up a, a laser display any anymore. But considering what is playing, they are nice. They are nice. I missed out on the whole um, 
uh, Laserdisc thing. I started collecting movies in 1999 uh, with uh, the advent of DVD. That's I had, probably the best I had because the, uh, Laserdisc yeah. was was not was not cheap. Was not cheap. It wasn't. But there, I know I have a couple of friends who are in this Norwegian uh, Laserdisc appreciation mm -hmm. group, and they have they have like meetings where they sit down and well, like watch Laserdiscs. No, no, it's no. Like, it's, it's, you a, it's a club. You wouldn't but... get me to to watch a Laserdisc. Uh, no. As, no, as I'm, much as I'm, I, um... I love them. Considering the noise that the player makes, you know the heavy, heavy rotation yeah. of these discs. You know you have a really nice background noise if the movie uh, uh, <laughs> doesn't give you a, a great score. But Laserdisc had, had an awesome sound. Considering uh, uh, the first five point, it was the first time that I could hear uh, a five point one track on uh, on Laserdisc. But mm -hmm. it uh, only functioned with uh, NTSC Laserdisc. It wasn't available with PAL, uh, with, uh, with our oh, yeah. uh, uh, TV system. It was only uh, possible to put an AC3 track on an NTSC laser mm. laser discs. And uh, the new uh, the new receiver, if you bought a new receiver, it doesn't have that uh, uh, that input anymore that you would need. Yeah, I mean, they to use hear, the uh, at, at five point one track on a, yeah on a the analog uh, cables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think that'll uh, do for discussing um, the thing. But uh, this wouldn't we we have to talk about physical media since you are the uh, one of the kings of physical media, and uh, as many others knows you, the uh, the trash panda of collecting yep. uh, trash and cult movies. So uh, you're a perfect fit for uh, for my taste in movies. So. <laughs> I, I picked uh, three titles from my collection okay. that I cherish. Uh, I can go uh, first, I guess. Yeah. Three titles that I cherish in in my collection that are either either cult movies or kind of cult trash movies. Uh, I mentioned it before, and this truly is one of my favorites. Uh, the Room. The Room. Uh, on Blu-ray, it's it's hard to fathom that this movie is on Blu-ray, but uh, Tommy but puts it out that himself. Speaks, that speaks for you know a cult following, you know. Yeah, a cult following, and uh, and I bought it directly from his uh, web store, so he sent me a oh, signed signed uh, photograph, and it came with two Tommy we saw boxer shorts. <laughs> <laughs> awesome! Awesome! Yeah. Set. It's it's uh, it's an amazing release when you when you get yeah. clothing with your uh, movies that's uh, that's a plus, and that right. movie is just I never get tired of watching it. It's yeah. it's just a, a party of of badness. Uh, for me, this actually isn't a, a bad movie, but you told me pick out cult movies. For me, it's a cult. Movie. Yeah, yeah. I guess you you have seen it too. It's of course fanboys. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, uh, the Great Road movie. Where they uh, do everything they can to see the Phantom Menace yep. for his friend, and I remember seeing the trailer back in the day, and I thought I have to see this movie. And then there was probably two years where I heard nothing anymore about this movie, and then I found out, considering the the, the story of the movie, that one of the guys has cancer, probably doesn't live, hasn't doesn't have that long to live anymore and they wanted to change that but considering that really tough topic it doesn't uh strain away that you get great laughs out of it yeah it's just a, and uh, i love the uh the shatner cameo yeah totally and considering i don't know if you have ever seen the deleted scenes for for fanboys I don't think so don't think so there is a scene in the truck in the van when they are driving and they're singing the Evox song, you know, the Evox party song. Yep, oh, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. And they couldn't put it in because of license uh, um, rights. But if okay. you see the deleted scenes, you know what they are singing, you know. Okay, so you can, you can imagine. Totally, totally, totally great deleted scene, unfortunately, not, not in the movie. So this is my first choice. Hmm. Then, boys, this is the... German. I have to uh, have to see that again. It's been a long time since I've seen it. So uh, I, yeah, it's, for me, it's a totally great road trip movie. You know, like you said, it's the stuff with the Star Trek and the Star Wars fans. <laughs> it's yep. awesome. I, I remember one one of my favorite scenes is when the guy comes in. You know, asked about 
how much for a Star Trek phaser? And he sends him out. This, this is how we know you are a Star Trek fan. Get out of my store. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Uh, and considering all the uh, cameos, you know, you got Carrie Fisher in it. Yeah. D.D. Williams has, has a cameo in it. It's great. And then for me, the greatest thing, of course, is the last line. What if the movie sucks? You know, <laughs> yes, and uh, and it kind of did. <laughs> yeah. um, it my uh, second pick is uh, a movie from Shameless, and it's The Beyond. Oh, okay. This release is it's interesting because it has a, a see through um, cover. Oh, nice. Uh, which really? is made of like uh, hard, hard plastic. Yeah. So you can choose to have it one or the other way. And uh, the cool thing is when it's uh, placed uh, in here, um, you kind of see the disc. It's, it's tough with my camera, but you see yep. the disc as kind of like an eye uh, going through here. And this is the first time that this movie has been uh, scanned and made. Uh, available with like the really correct colors, uh, and they've also restored the opening because there's there's four different ways this movie can open, and this okay. this allows you to kind of choose uh, which version you want. Nice. So, so it was highly seamless, and with seamless, seamless branching. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, my next pick, you know, I'm a little bit of a Kirsten, and we uh -huh. stay in the, yes. in the in the road movie trip. Is of course. Detroit Rock City. I put out the the old DVD from the movie, even if I was it was great that they put out the the movie on Blu-ray, just a standard Blu-ray. And for me, the great thing about this movie is you don't have to be a Kiss fan. It doesn't okay. hurt, of course, but you don't have to be because Kiss is really not in the movie. Is uh, just for the last, let's say, four minutes. They are in okay. the movie. It's I have just not seen about, it. It's just about those four guys who just wanted to want to see Kiss live. They have tickets, but they lose the tickets and then have to go on a road trip and find ways how they get tickets to get into the concert. Okay, so it's a great road trip. We have great music, and this is for me is a movie that I all, uh, recommend to other people who are actually not. Kiss fans, you know, just the feeling that you get, you're hyped to seeing a band, one of your favorites in concert, you know, the feeling, this is the night, I will see them live, you know, and this is just great, Detroit Rock City, I just can't recommend it enough, because cool. you don't have to be a Kiss fan at all, and of course it has a great soundtrack, of course there are Kiss songs in it, but there are a lot of other songs, Is It Easy, Highway to Hell, uh, uh, Love Hurts, Nazareth. So th the soundtrack is is great. So they forego on a, on a road trip and try to find ways. They split up. They split up and they try to find ways everyone to get a ticket to the show because they had tickets, but they lost their tickets. So it's a great road movie, even for not Kiss fans, Detroit Rock City. I have I have heard the title, but I've never seen it. Uh, but that sounds very interesting. So I am going to uh, to check yeah. that out. Absolutely, I can totally recommend it. You can purchase the the, the American Blu-ray, which is probably a schnäppchen uh, yeah. by now, and it and it should be uh, code free as well. It's uh, probably I think it's from Warner, so it would be code free anyway. Yeah, Warner uh, usually releases their things yeah. region free, so that's a good and thing. Don't watch any trailer like I always don't watch any okay. trailer. Okay, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Go, in, go in blind. If you go just, in blind. If you just like to going to concert, just a feeling, it's the day, this is the night you're going to see live, and those four guys have the problem, we don't have tickets, our tickets anymore. Oh, I have, yeah. I know the feeling of going to see a band. I went uh, a few years ago, I went to the Netherlands to see this progressive rock guy play live uh, a band called Arian, which um, okay. uh, he's a Dutch guy who does progressive rock. Uh, he, he recently, the, the second time he had a live show, he he had John John um, Delancey uh, Q Ooh, uh, as a narrator. He was standing on top of a castle um, uh, being the narrator to this story. Uh, so that was cool. He's a Star Trek fan. So, uh, so yeah. That, that um, my is a great is a great guest. 
he he's he's amazing. Uh, my third uh, pick for favorite releases, uh, Tremors. Tremors, awesome. The like, amazing like the thing. I, ten out of ten for Tremors. Yes, absolutely. This has forever been one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Uh, Arrow made uh, a four K release. I little little Tadia uh, seeing this movie on uh, a cable TV with commercial breaks could never ever ever have dreamed that someone would uh, remaster that movie put it out and do a proper 4k I've, I've had this movie on DVD like maybe twice maybe three yeah. times I've had it on blu-ray and now I have it on 4k and I remember the first DVD was a really shitty transfer it had like a lot yeah. of compression um jaggies uh all those bad things uh so it's amazing having this movie extra, put together extra with... sharpness you know extra yeah sharpness. extra sharpness yeah it was so sharp that uh, the film grain tried to eat you yeah and uh, it was really nice that they gotten now a new 4k transfer because even the hd like you said blu-ray or the yeah. hd dvd was based on that old on that yes. old master that's, that was not the best to have for, for wasn't the movie. was simply wasn't great no. and you've got three i've got three there you know my email so of course i picked the adventures of Fort Fairlane. <laughs> of course I had, i had to because for me a uh, detective in the rock and roll scene you know even in, in the in the metal scene for me was great and back in the day we don't Had the internet, I didn't know about Andrew Dice Clay and his. Uh, mm -hmm. He was a comedian, and I didn't know about all the shenanigans that he got. What we would say today, cancelled, you know, after uh, um, around the movie came out. So I would really have loved to see a sequel to this if it mm -hmm. would have been successful. You know, you could have started. I always think you could have started the the sequel with a gay architect building his new beach house, you know, like you said. <laughs> and for me, this is one where I totally love the original, uh, so the English English uh, uh, version. But I also can watch this movie with the German dub because this was the first mm -hmm. version I saw it in with the German dub. And the jokes were great in, the, in, the, <laughs> in German as well. So I can watch, this is a movie that I can watch in both uh, uh, languages with the German dub. Or in the in the uh, with of course which I would do now in the English version and just to to show you my craziness I've got two DVDs and why I got two DVDs this was probably the first one the Australian one yeah but Australian like like we in Europe has PAL a system and we all know the DVD bang the day speed and up they got PAL correct speed up and especially if there's music in it not. Mm -hmm. With the dialogue, but with the music you hear, it's a little bit too fast. And when it came out in America, I bought, of course, the American DVD as well. Now it's luckily it's gotten out on Blu-ray. Of course, I would love uh, a 4K oh, of, of it. You know, I'm so and this is a movie uh, I can, happy. I can, I can uh, always. Uh, these three movies are for me always playable. Rep yeah. Repeat viewings on end. Oh yeah, I, I also repeat view. Um, but talking about that PAL and NTSC system thing, I'm so happy today with the the 24 uh, frames per second system, which we where we can enjoy movies how they are yeah. supposed to be seen. I remember owning the extended versions of Lord of the Rings on uh, on PAL, yeah. and it, it was horrible because some yeah. some places in the movie they had kind of these like catch ups where the music oh. would would just sound like the pitch was going up and down almost like it oh, was a bad vhs yeah. uh and, and now now we don't have to have that uh which is the no. good thing but this was the reason why i bought it again as america i can understand that, totally. at, the, at the right at the right speed you know yeah i get it that's how it is where we we are yeah. collectors we uh we buy things we put them in my in our shelves uh yeah. there's less and money in our pocket I was lucky that we uh, are happy DVD The American DVD had, had came with a, another another cover, you know. And for me, it was great. It was just the start of the movie, you know, when uh, uh, the girl asks for. Uh, uh, he says, well, "What's your phone number?" And and uh, it's five five five. It's the number that you always use in movies. For me, that's yeah. 
<laughs> always legitimize you're in a movie, everything goes now. You know, yeah. it's just it's just a movie. I have seen it, but it's a very long time. Uh, but uh, I will put it on my list to rewatch, and then maybe you can come back uh, sometime later, and we Always. can uh, discuss Always. that movie. And and thank you again so much for coming on my uh, little show. You're welcome. Uh, it was a good conversation, and you are welcome to come back anytime. Um, certainly do. Certainly do. And um, it's been nice talking to you, uh, both uh, chatting with you uh, this uh, this last week and uh, good having you on the show. Uh, people out there, uh, please do check out Let's Get Physical Media, which is over at the Burr Network. Uh, and it uh, goes out on on Sundays at... Uh, But luckily, in, in... not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> Considering yes. the recording. Uh, Your co-host, uh, th yeah, this is this is being recorded on a Sunday, uh, yeah. because uh, Dieter's uh, partner in crime, Robert Meyer Burnett, is out watching Dune, Dune. again. Sorry. Yes, again. Uh, a, a movie that we both agree uh, wasn't that yeah. great. Uh, it was, you know, that it was just one of those movies where the hype was so great. You know, always you yeah. hear masterpiece, masterpiece, and uh, you go in, you want to love it. I just came out okay. Yeah, like like that I've said earlier, it. the uh, the spice did not flow; it merely drizzled. It, be it barely and, drizzled. Uh, it barely drizzled. And, and I, I, and I watched that. it. I watched it again yesterday on uh, HBO Max. It's gotten okay. better with the second viewing. You know, the expectations were uh, not there anymore. I was know what what I was getting into it, but considering, let's just say we would would get a sequel of Dune, I would have. Pick the end point of the movie a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. I would have closed the movie after the big sandworm appears and Paul and his mother are uh, uh, discovered by the Fremen. But no mm -hmm. dialogue exchange anymore. There I would have ended, so the sequel would have opened with the duel that he has with the other guy. And yep. I have shortened the movie. The vision's a little bit shorter. You know, not, not much... Everything in it was just shortened, or the or the walk with his mother uh, through the through the desert. You know, a little bit shortened there, a little bit short, so that we would get a running time, let's say about 140. And I think mm -hmm. it would have would have uh, given the movie a little bit of a better better flow at the end, yeah. because uh, the, on, considering the the action the action that it is in the movie, it's mostly in the middle section of the movie. And then the movie is a little bit slow, you know, getting getting to somewhere new in the, in the end. My my biggest problem was just that I I, I just didn't care about anyone in yeah, the movie. Unfortunately, uh, not, no. could not give a, an ounce of like sympathy no. or em empathization yeah. or. I think I think actually uh, the best character in the in the movie is uh, is uh, Jason Momoa. Yeah. Correct, and we all know Chase Momoa has great charisma, but yeah, yeah. probably not. Nobody would put him in the greatest character uh, in the no. greatest actor character uh, category. But this is uh, shows you the problem of the movie. If someone like Chase Momoa, you think is the best best character in yeah. in the movie itself, of course it was audio visually stunning, and I hope we will get. A sequel because if we don't get a sequel for me the movie is oh, it's, pretty it's, useless, a, it's, a, it's a disaster if it doesn't get a sequel it's it's yeah. a complete disaster i've yeah. i've um i've talked about david uh, lynch's version earlier yeah. on this uh, show yeah uh, that was the only thing the new tune gave me more appreciation of the old one because i watched the old one from a french blu-ray that was had, had a newer transfer uh, i was really Uh, looking forward to seeing it again, but I thought the movie didn't age that well, you know. But considering that I've seen the Lynch version, and then I watched a new one from Denis, and of course the story is actually the same, so I was just going through the same plot points, and I thought I would, I know, I don't know, get something vastly different, you know. But mm -hmm. uh, David, in the David Lynch version, you get 
much more stuff in it, you know, to get yeah, to see you do. Emperor, uh, the, 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 the Emperor, you know, um, is in it. It's, you know? it's, a, it's a better movie. It is. <laughs> and the only problem actually with the old one for me is that you, for me, I think at the beginning, is everything okay? And then it seemed rushed at the, at the, at the ending, you know, like, oh, no budget anymore. We have to end it. So at the beginning, it was all jiving and then it went off the rails at, at, the, at yeah. the end. At the end, it it just, uh, yeah, it, it, it kind because, of... Because uh, it was very, very fast than, than it did. Yeah. Like Fremens, you know, fall in love and go, no, rebellion. Yeah. It's <laughs> very, it, it feels very rushed. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I even if the effect were not that great, I the idea of the shields that uh, that they use. Oh yeah, I like yeah. more in the in the older version. You know, Me even too. if the, the 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 rotoscoping effect is not not that great or doesn't hold up anymore, but uh, it was more appealing more to to me than just this uh, vibration of the, yeah. in the in the, no. in the new one. You know, I really also the the exact same thing is is something I uh, I told uh, my guest. Uh, who was guesting uh, doing uh, the discussion about Dune? I actually made a point of exactly the same thing about me liking the old shields. And I had a video clip of this uh, parody where someone had done it with uh, cardboard. <laughs> if you, I don't know if you have seen, there is an, an YouTube clip where they uh, contrast, I think, both trailers or something like that. Yeah. Where yeah. you have the old one and the new one. And for They're me, kind of, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and the new one, for me, it just from the look, it felt so planned. You know, we have always this brown and beige tones. You know, uh, and you and then you see the the old one. You know, with the the lush colors. You know, <laughs> the great the designs. So the new one gave me more appreciation actually of the of the old one. Even though I'm not a, a, a fan of the of the forty uh, eighty four one. But I, I liked it, but I watched it for the first time actually recently. So yeah. uh, it, it just ticked all the boxes for me. I, I like David Lynch. Um, I like like older science fiction, and I, I just thought the the scope and the design and the costumes. Uh, it, it was uh, a really ambitious movie. Yeah, and like uh, so many pointed out in, in other YouTube reviews about uh, Dune, the Harkonnens. Are really just cardboard cut out bad guys in in the June yeah. one, you know, and the new one. So not really much to to grasp about about them at, at all, you know. But I agree. Let's hope we will get a sequel because the sequel can, like we all know, sequels can throw back to the first one yeah. and in make a it better, negative or positive uh, way, and it could. Uh, uh, lift up the, the 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 first one for me if the sequel is uh, is great, you know. Only time will tell. Only time will tell. Well, this has to be a, a good conversation because we're having trouble uh, ending this uh, yeah. this discussion. So that's a good <laughs> so, sign. So we, so, we, so we should we should. <laughs> Uh, well, again, thank you for coming, and uh, thank you okay. out there for watching this. Uh, I, I'd love if you'd uh, give me a like and I have a subscription if you haven't, and please leave a comment, good or bad. I always like hearing about uh, how the show went. Uh, thank you for coming to the show, Dieter. Uh, we're going You're to welcome. be ending it now with a trailer for what's up for next week's show. And in the meantime, stay cult. <laughs>